Now I'm going to help you. This side of the tape is directed to your conscious mind, the part of your mind where you make decisions and where you are aware of now. I will explain a number of techniques you must use to create patterns of confident behavior. Use these techniques deliberately until they become habits for you. They will provide a framework in which the energy released from your unconscious will be expressed. Your unconscious mind is all the memory, wisdom and perception that you're unaware of at any one time. It contains all your hidden potential and inner power. On the other side of this tape is a powerful hypnotic induction which releases the power of the unconscious mind to give you strength and confidence. It will program your mind for success. You should listen to it only when you can relax safely and comfortably and ignore the outside world completely. Each of us is different. We all want confidence, but we all have different lives to live. I would like you to think for a moment now about what you want confidence for. Take a moment or two to think about that. Where will you use it? What changes will it make for you as you are more confident? Let's take a specific example. Imagine a scene in your head now where you are totally confident. Imagine you are seeing a film right now of a time in the future using your confidence to achieve something you really enjoy. Do whatever you would do if you knew you couldn't fail. Just sit back now and watch yourself achieving excellence. Notice how you look, the expression on your face, the light in your eyes. Notice the life, the grace and the elegance in your movements. Let the camera of your mind move all around the scene and replay it as slowly or as fast as you wish, as many times as you wish, so that you become fully acquainted with every aspect of your presence during a moment of successful achievement. Notice how you're sitting or standing, your expression, and your movement that lets you know this is a moment of great success the concentration or happiness on your face, the grace, the ease, the commitment of your movements, the sense of mastery. And pay attention here to the sensations in your body. Notice how the body responds to your imagination. Your body responds to all the pictures that are conjured up in your mind deliberately or accidentally, in exactly the same way. Now, you are going to use this responsiveness. As you continue to visualize this time of confidence, and as you feel the pleasure and power of it, gently and precisely press together the finger and thumb of one hand. Doesn't matter which hand, just do it. Whenever you want confidence, Whenever you need to be reminded of your powerful positive potential, repeat that exact same pressure with your finger and thumb and recall this picture vividly and clearly to stimulate you to be fully in your own power and confidence again. By repeating this gesture every time you think of this image and feel these confident feelings, you are creating an association that will allow you to bring these feelings back whenever you want them. Don't underestimate the power of your mind here. Do this simple but powerful exercise and you'll find it gets easier and easier and more and more powerful every time. You see, the human mind works by association. When we've experienced two things together for a little while, one will automatically remind us of the other. This associational linking is very powerful. For example, I like traveling, so whenever I go to the airport, I feel that excitement even if I'm just going to pick someone up. The rule is, repetition is the mother of success. So let's just repeat this mental visualization. Remind yourself of that picture of you being successful and confident. It doesn't matter if it's not very clear at first. Each time you do it, it'll improve. Home in on the part of it that makes you feel best.
magnify that part. Make it bigger, brighter, louder, bolder, brilliant, richer in your mind. Really feel it within you and around you. And when that confidence is at its peak, press your finger and thumb together again in exactly the same way as you did before. And say to yourself, I am confident. And then relax. You are making that finger and thumb pressure into a signal to your unconscious mind to call up that feeling of confidence and power within you. Practice this imagining for at least three weeks every day and then whenever you feel challenged, you can repeat that exact same movement. Concentrate for a few moments and access your inner state of confidence. Do it 21 times in a row. Olympic athletes the world over have used exactly this technique to prepare to win their competitions. Now you can use it. You see, we're all born with confidence. Babies are confident. They cry and they expect to be fed. They explore and they have no fear. We all have the ability to regain the confidence we are born with. And one of the main things we have to do, which is ridiculously simple, is just to make the new confidence. People who've lost confidence feel fear, and so they often hurry to get past things or hang back and avoid them. They speak too little or too fast. And when they feel awkward because they're doing these things, they have a tendency to do them even more. To let ourselves feel confident, we need two simple qualities, patience and flexible thinking. A few years ago, I was giving a presentation at a conference. I was on a panel with two other speakers, and while they spoke, I was really enjoying relaxing and being a member of the audience. And so it came as a bit of a shock to me when I was called to speak. I went to the rostrum and looked out and saw a huge room full of people looking at me. All of a sudden, I felt my stomach tighten and my hands went clammy and started to tremble. I was very surprised because I'm used to appearing in public, so I wasn't expecting to feel anything like that. So what I did was nothing. I just stood there and I noticed my feelings. First of all, I noticed my breathing and I got used to standing where I was. I thought for a moment about what I was going to say how much I believed in it, and I accepted that my body was excited. I was excited. I didn't have to call it stage fright or lack of confidence, I was excited. And that added a spark to my presentation. Then, when I felt ready to speak, I began. Now this was a fairly simple moment, but it shows three things. Firstly, you never know when you're going to be surprised, because I had no idea I was going to feel anything like that when I stood up. Secondly, it reminded me of the value of patience. I said I took my time to notice what I felt and got used to it. I didn't rush away from my feelings by diving straight into my presentation in a terrible rush. And when I acknowledged how I felt, it wasn't overwhelming. It helped to notice my breathing, let that be calm as well. Thirdly, I reminded myself that the feeling I felt wasn't good or bad. It was just what I felt. And I could choose to call it fear or stage fright or eagerness or excitement. And I chose to call it excitement. I was reminded of this when I was sent a tape of my presentation and I heard the pause before I started to speak. That was the pause I took to make room for my confidence. There are lots of ways you can make room for confidence in your life. In conversations, we can practice confident listening. Confident listening is allowing yourself to concentrate fully on the other person's speech. It means that rather than preparing what I'm going to say, I really listen to you. And so often when I listen well, what I need to say when it's okay to say nothing, it becomes much clearer. When I hear the rhythm of the conversation, I discover that there are plenty of times when silence is appropriate. By listening with patience, I make room for confidence in my conversations. And the same is true with patience and feelings. Patience 
adventuring for criminals. Turn your attention outward to the world while acknowledging what you feel. But don't judge or compare or worry. Stay curious. Don't judge yourself or others. Often you don't have to do half as much as you were worried about when you lacked confidence. And when it's time to act, what you have to do is clear and simple. We all use habits a great deal in our life. Some habits help our confidence, others don't. So to increase our confidence, we have to amplify the habits that assist us and eliminate those that don't. Much of our thinking is habitual. It happens all by itself and is just a string of associations. Mostly, we tend to be absorbed in a task or an interest or float on the river of automatic thinking. However, we can affect it. With a little effort, we can redirect our attention. It turns out that associational thinking is very powerful, so this effort has to be made over and over again. At first, it's quite unnerving to discover how easily we can be distracted. But if we repeat the effort over and over again, we gradually find that we affect our patterns of association and also increase our powers of concentration. There's one very important way we need to make this effort. Nowadays, the atmosphere of ideas in which we live is very busy. Messages bombard us from all sides, and not all of them are very healthy. On television and radio, we're asked to buy far more than we can afford, and the news is always full of doom and disaster. To protect ourselves, we learn to ignore a great deal of it, so that we're not overwhelmed. But unfortunately, we can also inadvertently ignore the beauty and blessings of life as well. So we must learn to be selective and to reinforce the positive, beautiful messages in our lives so that we nourish the positive and beautiful in ourselves. As we pay attention to the goodness in the outside world, we strengthen it in ourselves. It's also useful to phrase things positively, to use optimistic language whenever possible. I don't mean that we should ignore difficulties or problems, but that we should always look towards the solution, not the negativity. If we use positive words to ourselves and others, we are more likely to receive positive words and messages from them. Try to avoid putting people down or putting yourself down. If you want, you can make a game of cleaning up your language. Do it by yourself with a friend. Watch out for negative phrases like, I can't, or I shouldn't, or I'll never, or I'm just not very good, or starting sentences with but or no. Whenever you hear yourself or a friend use a phrase like that, stop and rephrase it in positive terms. For example, instead of I can't do such and such, use I can learn to do such and such or I haven't learned to do such and such yet. There's no fixed meaning in life except the meaning that we bring to it. So let's make your life brighter by looking at things that you've got going for you. Positive thinking becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Every time we pay attention to something, we energize its presence within us. If we pay attention to negative thoughts, we just make them stronger. So they crop up more and more often. But when we pay attention to positive thoughts, we strengthen them so that they return to our consciousness more and more often. Whatever you pay attention to returns to your awareness more and more frequently. So it's vitally important to acknowledge and concentrate on your successes, great and small. And what's really healthy and rewarding around you? Remember, you always get more of what you focus on in life. Here's a way of focusing that power. These questions direct your mind to what's positive in your life. So in order to answer them, you have to experience some of the good feelings that go with the answer. Every morning, ask yourself, what do I feel happiest about in my life? Who or what in my life makes me feel most loved? Who or what in my life makes me feel richest? And if you don't know the answers to these questions yet, ask yourself instead, what could I feel happiest about? Who or what in my life could make me feel richer, happier, or more confident? When you were a child, you may have seen a model railway in a shop window. 
the train would go round and round the window, across the front and into a tunnel, and then out of the tunnel on the other side, across the front of the window, back into the tunnel and so on. The conscious mind is a bit like the window. We see the train of our thoughts when it crosses the front of the window. The train carries on out of sight and pulls whatever we've seen through the tunnel. Put positive thoughts onto that train when we see it. When it's in our conscious mind, it will automatically take them into the unconscious mind again and again. So whenever you think of yourself, think of your successful self, and the automatic, incessant train of our thoughts will take that positive picture of yourself to your unconscious, and slowly but surely, your fundamental view of yourself will improve and it will become natural to think of yourself as successful, competent, and confident. Another part of making room for confidence in our life is accepting that there is risk. This may sound odd at first. After all, we often wish that we had so much confidence that we could avoid risk. But confidence isn't knowledge. If we know we can do something, we don't need confidence. We can just do it. We only have confidence we are not entirely sure, not 100% sure of success, and yet we still have a goal. That's the essence of confidence. When there's no risk, there's only certainty. Confidence only comes when there's risk. So we must embrace the risk, recognize it, and realize that it has a place in it. In fact, it is because of the risk you can value your achievements because you achieve them in the face of risk. This is why you can feel good about every step on your path to confidence. Each step is a risk, however small. And as you get used to having confidence, you will realize that you get used to having risks. Risks don't go away. We just learn that we can face it and deal with it. And as we do so, we become more powerful. We learn we can achieve our goals and we become more confident. Let me show you one more thing that increases your confidence, and it's great fun as well. Think of somebody now with whom you don't feel confident. Imagine them walking in your front door. And imagine they've got a red clown's nose on their face and an orange wig on their head. Or shrink them so they're about 12 inches tall. And call to mind the way they talk. If, for example, it's an authoritarian sort of voice, you stupid, useless person. Make them sound like Mickey Mouse. You stupid, useless person. Oh, make them have a sexy voice. You stupid, useless person. <laughs> really enjoy making them as ridiculous as you want and get used to this way of seeing them. Even when you meet them face to face, You'll find it's great fun, and it really changes how you deal with them. It's very empowering and enjoyable to look forward to the success in our future. And the more we get used to it, the more it happens. I'd like you to close your eyes now and fantasize how things would be in an ideal world. Imagine your dreams have come true. You're doing exactly what you want to do. All around you, you can see exactly what you'd like to see. Everything you hear is perfect and you enjoy what you feel. And as you do this, where in your body does it feel the best of all? Locate the feeling and give it a color. Imagine that color flowing there with you. Now, begin to move the color all over your body and spread that fantastic feeling throughout you. Permeate your body. Notice how wonderful you can feel just by using your mind like this. Make sure it's around your legs and feet, stomach, chest, shoulders, arms, hands and fingers, neck and face. Make it truly brilliant. Turn up the brightness, feeling joy and energy surging within you. Now double the intensity of that color again and keep that feeling within you. Wonderful, brilliant, bright, fantastic. When you feel good and happy, your non-verbal communications put you in tune with good and happy people.
and help other people feel good too, so you create a warm, friendly atmosphere. With this simple exercise, you can actually affect all the world around you. Do this every day and you'll soon notice how it begins to bring out the optimism and enthusiasm in the people you mix with. Remember, happiness and excitement are contagious. So you're going to direct your attention away from comparison with others, away from the barrage of advertising which plays upon fears and insecurities, and away from the negative judgments, and steer it towards a positive appreciation of the world and people around you. This inner glow can help you do that. Finally, remember to walk tall. When you've finished using this tape, get up and hold your head up in a comfortable, relaxed position on your shoulders. Let your spine support you. Imagine that a golden thread runs vertically up through your spine and straight up to the sky, and that that thread supports you. Let yourself relax safely held by that thread. This relaxed, upright stance is the natural position of confidence, and it will soon be as natural to you as breathing. So enjoy it. And to give you a rock-solid foundation for your confidence and power, use the hypnotic induction on the other side of this tape every day for three weeks, and as often as you want thereafter. Side two is a powerful hypnotic induction that will reinforce all the work you've done on this side and will boost confidence at every level of your mind. Whenever you want to relax deeply and totally, go somewhere where you don't have to be aware of the outside world and use side two to go into as deep a trance as you need to. Each time you go into trance, the effect gets stronger. So use it every day for three weeks. Use it, enjoy it, and you'll find that as your confidence increases day after day, you'll find yourself doing things you used to dream. Use both sides of the tape every day until you can really feel the improvement you want.